All right, I will. Uh, I'm Brian Rabin, uh, president of our Wooten PTSA. And um, we, uh, we'll, we're going to cover PTSA business uh, first part of the meeting, and then we're going to turn it over to Mr. Nelson and um, Mrs. Robinson and, and others from the school to be able to uh, present um, some great information to you. So, um, so this evening, um, the list of presenters are on the left side, and, um, and this is how you'll see with all of our slide decks. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about um, what is Wooten PTSA, how you can support PTSA. Uh, we want to give a big shout out to all of our volunteers. We want to share with you uh, upcoming events. The fall season is very busy, so we have lots of things happening. Uh, we want to give you a membership update. Um, Lily, our treasurer, will give you uh, the budget review, and we're going to take a vote. Uh, so those that are members will, will vote on that. Um, so we can pass the budget for the school year. Um, and actually, uh, Jen's going to talk about community outreach, and I, I changed the order a little bit. So uh, so we'll we'll jump right in. Do you want so, me to start? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so let me just cover this part first. So um, what is Wooten PTSA? I do get this question a lot um, at Back to School Night and at other times. I know many of you uh, may know what PTSA is. Uh, and other parents may be new to the school or not familiar. So we're the Wooten Parent Teacher Student Association. We wear many hats around the school to support our school community. Um, we do a lot of great things for the school, uh, such as teacher appreciation, um, funding grants for teachers and students, helping families in need during the holidays or our Helping Hands program, sponsoring the annual college fair, organizing the Wooten Cluster Fall Festival, we provide support for student events like homecoming and prom and many others. And you'll hear about a lot, uh, a number of those this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to Jen to share a little bit about our community outreach program and the Helping Hands program. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Eisenfeld. I am the um, community outreach liaison for the nine cluster schools that includes um, all the elementary schools and the two middle schools and Wooten and all of those schools feed into Wooten. Um, community outreach is really important. We have students in our community who need just a helping hand a little bit. And um, so you'll see things come out that maybe a child in our cluster needs a pair of shoes or a coat. And um, I send an email out to everyone and they're able to send a gift card and then I'll purchase the items that is needed. And all of the items that are needed come from the counselors or the pupil personnel workers. Um, if you would like to be added to this volunteer list and all you have to do is say, yes, I'd like to help out or, or no, I wouldn't. Um, well, actually, you don't even have to say no, you wouldn't. If, if you'd like to help out, you just send me an email and um, that is my email right there, PTSA underscore community liaison at Wooten. Um, and very soon you're going to be getting a lot of information about the holiday helping hands a lot of you might have seen this already it supports um our cluster students and their siblings and what we do is a registry is made for each child that is participating and their siblings um and the children get a uh, some clothing they get toys toiletries um, a pair of shoes and a coat, and then their families will um, get a grocery store gift card. So, there are, and it's only for the students that are in our cluster. So, believe it or not, last year we had 105 students, um, their siblings as well, and um, it's a great way to give back to the Wooten community. So I encourage everyone, if you want to help out and go on, you'll get all the information. Um, and you can email us if you have any questions. You're gonna be inundated with a lot of information. So um, it's just a really nice way at the holidays to give back to our students in, in, the, um, in the cluster. Thank you, Jan, and, and and it helps to 
provide a great holiday for the, for those that uh, would not have a great holiday otherwise. So it's really a great program. And um, any donations to the Wooten PTSA are tax deductible. Um, so how can you support Wooten uh, PTSA? And the way you can support PTSA is just purchasing a membership. So it's a really small investment for us to be able to do a lot of big things for the school. Um, so we really need your help. And thank you to all those that have already joined. But if you've not joined, please join. Um, cost of membership is 65 for two parent family and student, 40 for one parent family and student, and uh, $10 for any additional students. So it's, it's uh, you know, not not it's a it's a reasonable price um i know it can be expensive for some but it really makes a huge difference because this is the bulk of our funding and how we can support the with the things i shared with you so how do you uh, communicate or how do you hear about wooten uh, ptsa um activities events so we we have a number of ways to do that we uh many of you have probably seen our weekly patriot news newsletter it comes out at 6 a.m on monday mornings or Tuesday morning, if we have a Monday holiday, um, we send out A to Z messages, like the message that went out for tonight as a reminder. Um, and then we have our website, uh, wootenptsa.org. Um, we do need to make some updates to that site, so we will be getting to that soon. And then, uh, of course, you can email me or um, any of the PTSA volunteers, and and you can uh, you know you can email me uh, right here, and you can find the information for other uh, contacts on our uh, PTSA website. So we do have a monthly meeting. We hope you join us, just like tonight. It's on the third Tuesday of every month at seven p.m. Uh, we do have guest presenters. Um, we do want to get your ideas for topics and speakers. Um, we've been able to bring in some really amazing speakers uh, to talk about a lot of great uh, topics. So, but we need we need your help with that. So please uh, provide us with ideas. We tend to get a number of college speakers so about a variety of college topics, but we like to talk about other really important issues like mental health um, and. Um, and, and other topics like that, finances for uh, parents helping their students with finances and things like that. So we, we're, we're open to all ideas. Um, we also have the Principal Coffee Chat. We sponsor that with Mr. Nelson um, every month as well. And it happens on the Friday right after the, the Tuesday PTSA meeting. So this coming Friday is gonna be our first coffee chat with Mr. Nelson. It's gonna be at 10.30. Um, many months, it'll be at 9 a.m. This month, it'll be at 1030. Um, we will be sending out a message tomorrow um, seeking any questions that you may have. So Mr. Nelson will be able to get those questions in advance and be prepared to answer the questions. Um, but we hope you join. It's a great conversation with Mr. Nelson. We learn, we get some great updates and uh, Mr. Nelson answers questions. So really good opportunity uh, each month to, um, to attend the coffee chat. So for um, our uh, PTSA volunteers like myself, um, you can see our executive board members here. And then we have quite a few volunteers helping uh, as, and this is our board of directors in, in a lot of different areas. So um, we, we count on our volunteers. We're all super busy uh, with uh, lots of things, but um, you know we try to break things up into small parts so that we can uh, do the work of the PTSA and give back to our school. Um, we do have some positions that are remaining open. This has been one of the best years since uh, I've been president uh, where we've gotten a lot of volunteers, but we still need um, two Wooten cluster reps. Those reps sit on the uh, cluster um, committee, which is made up of reps from each of our uh, nine cluster schools or one of the nine. Um, and it, there's about, I think there's five meetings during this school year. So it's every other month. Uh, so it's one meeting every other month. Um, and then you bring the information back as well. Um, we also are looking for a Latino parent. Uh, I say I put parent in there twice, but it's Latino Parent Student Network Liaison. So we need uh, that. That's a position that's really important for uh, uh, for the Latino Parent Student Network Liaison Group. And, uh, and then we also need a co-leader for the African-American Parent Student Network as well. So um, we've had a long-serving 
um, liaison and she needs some help. And so she's looking for a co-leader to, to help out. So uh, we were happy to provide more information about those positions. You could also look at our website. Uh, we have a, um, uh, on, there's a roles and responsibilities uh, section and you can see uh, what the duties are. And uh, let me know if you're interested. So another thing that PTSA does that you probably wouldn't know about is we uh, we are advocates. We're advocates for our school and we're advocates for uh, MCPS. We're advocates for um, and really important um, county and national and state public health, I mean, public education issues. Um, we testify uh, at, at uh, the Board of Education for the Capital Improvement Program. We testify uh, at the Montgomery County Council and uh, and also for the operating budget. So the operating budget and the um, facilities budgets are separate. The facility budget, it's called the CIP. And then there's also the operating budget and those uh, happen at different times during the year. You may, uh, in November, November 6th is Wooten uh, testimony in front of the Board of Education. And I will be asking uh, families to come out and support the testimony. Uh, our SGA work very closely with our SGA uh, to develop the testimony so we can support our school. We've been fighting to get a new facility uh, for quite a long time. We were able to get some great um, updates to the building this summer and some more next summer, but we have a ways to go. So we're going to continue advocating. Um, we have three MCC PTA, Montgomery County Council PTA, Wooten Cluster Coordinators. Uh, these are Wooten uh, parents that serve as cluster coordinators or they they their parents within our cluster, Samit, Junwa, and Vivian. And they they do a lot of work on behalf of, of our cluster. So um, they're always happy to talk with you. And uh, I work very closely with them in, in the advocacy work that we do. Um, we also have a Wooten uh, PTSA school store. So if you're looking for Wooten gear, uh, you can find all of that on uh, squadlocker.com. You can find the link uh, on our website as well. Uh, there's a discount code that is um, uh, there right now. I'm not sure when that one ends. Um, we have, uh, oh, there's a lot of top brands, all different types of clothing types. And uh, we have a variety of logos, a lot of different logos, uh, like the uh, PTSA logo here and many other logos as well. So um, if you're looking for gear, that's a great place to go. And they do provide 10% back to the PTSA. Okay, um, let's mark your calendars for some really great events coming up, first uh, of which is the fifth annual college fair. It's a free event. Um, it's a really uh, fun event uh, in, in, um, for our students. We have a lot of students that are there supporting the event, but we also uh, give an opportunity to parents and students to, to talk to our college reps. There's 70 plus college reps that are gonna be there. And um, it's on uh, Tuesday, October 1st from 5 to 7 p.m. It's in the upper parking lot. So that's the lot um, when in the way, if you're facing Wooten's to the right and um, we're, we're set up all in the lot, it'll be, uh, we call it a tailgate and it's a, a really great event. And uh, we're really happy to have so many college reps coming uh, and it's a good opportunity to talk directly with them and get your questions answered. And this is for students and parents. And uh, in all ages, so there's, it's not any particular grade, you know, it doesn't matter which grade you're in. Um, and then coming up on Friday, October 18th, immediately following the football game is Wooten Homecoming. Um, our uh, student body has opted for uh, a second year of the GLOCO event. Uh, so that's going to happen in the lower uh, gym and lower part of the building. And uh, it's a really fun event. PTSA provides an inflatable uh, that we provide for that event. Uh, we also need parent volunteers, so we will be putting out a request for parent volunteers. We're also going to need snacks and water donations, so we're going to put out a request for that as well. Um, and and that's uh, we we usually get a great uh, a lot of stuff, and that's really uh, very helpful. And um, and you know it's only uh, it's about two and a half hours, two and a half three hours that we need help, and we can split up the shifts. So. We do appreciate parents to come out and help support that uh, by chaperoning. And then um, late October, we have our Wooten Cluster Fall Festival. Of course, everything here is in October. It's on Saturday, October 26th from 12 to 4 in the lower parking lot. So this is in the lot where the stadium is. Um, and it's a community event with all nine of our cluster schools. So all six of our elementary schools, our two middle schools, and of course, Wooten. Um, we have the SGA. Um, clubs, um, all the planning, 
for each uh, grade level come out and they uh, run activities. We have performances from uh, Akatonics and marching band and others, and it's just a really fun event. Um, we also have community organizations coming out. Um, it's a great event for the younger kids and um, and all of our a lot of our high school students uh, are running the events. Patriot ambassadors are there, so it's a it's a really fun day. And um, this year we're gonna have great weather. I'm predicting great weather that day. We had rain last year. Um, we have our PTSA restaurant night coming up on December 4th. Um, I know you see a lot of these. Um, we decided to do it as a Falls Grove restaurant night. We did it last year as well, did very well. So it includes Chipotle, uh, uh, Chipotle Mama Lucia's, Ma uh, Moby Dick's and Jersey Mike's and a uh, and, uh, percentage of all sales uh, come back to, to uh, PTSA. And um, some of them are all day. Some have uh, afternoon hour, afternoon and evening hours, and you can uh, order. You can either sit in or uh, order, and it'll all count. You just have to mention Wooten PTSA. So um, thank you for for your support, and it's a great night uh, to have dinner out. And then we have another uh, restaurant night coming up for the boys and girls soccer teams. That's on September twenty fourth at Chick Fil A. And now I'm going to turn it over to Catherine to give our membership update. Hello, everyone. I am Catherine. I'm the membership chair. So this year we had some issues with the membership types. Um, so, so far I have fixed them all. So I basically checked um, after the facts on A to Z. So now this is the latest update. Oh, um, so last year we have about 1,060 members, um, but this year, as of today, we have a total of um, 741 members um, that have been recorded onto A to Z, but also we are facing an issue, which is the ninth grade families. Um, some of them, we don't have the data at A to Z, um, so I still have 60 members, uh, the sales that I cannot record at A to Z. So I was wondering whether Dr. Uh, Principal Nielsen can help us to find out whom we can approach to get the data for ninth grade families, because we are getting part of the data from CJMS, and then we got some data from Robert Frost. But for CJMS, we only got 91 students' family information. All right, well, we'll, we'll follow up on that, Catherine. And, and yep. so um, you can see we budgeted for 1245 and we have 782. So we have a little ways to go. Um, I know we can hit, hit our goal. We um, have, uh, actually, just now I look at it, we have eight, 801. Compared okay. to last year, last year around September 18th, I gave an update, we had 821. So we are 20 members shorter compared to uh, last year. All right, thank you. Catherine, Catherine, I just wanted to acknowledge, I did receive your request. I know that our Synergy system has a directory withholding, which, which makes it a little challenging to just kind of give global data, but we'll definitely give that a look and maybe we can talk outside the meeting to see what we can do, okay? Sure, thank you. Thank you. All right, and I'm gonna turn it over to Lily to give uh, the budget update and then we'll we'll take our vote. Lily, are you on? If not, I will give the update here. All right, Lily doesn't look like she got on. So, um, so this is our, our proposed budget for the for the year for the fiscal year. So our fiscal year starts on July first, and um, we have a comparison with uh, last fiscal year compared to this fiscal year. Um, you can see that we uh, we we lowered membership slightly. Um, we kept uh, donations a little bit higher. Um, we do work with a number of um, prep 
uh, companies, prep, uh, test prep companies. And so um, we do raise money working with them. And so you can see uh, that amount. And we, we have some additional uh, vendors that we're partnered with. So we did increase that amount uh, by $1,800. Um, and then uh, we have a, a big fundraiser that we are planning in April. Uh, I think it's our March, March, April timeframe. Uh, it's the Harlem uh, Wizards are going to be coming to uh, Wooten and it'll be a really fun event. And we do think that um, we'll be able to increase the fundraising numbers as well. So you can see our total income, 46698 um, It's It's a bit ahead of uh, last year uh, in total. Um due to uh, the increase in um, a few different uh, categories. And then over on the uh, other side with, uh, we have our uh, expense expenses over here. We have our organizational expenses, our operational expenses. Um, PTSA objectives would be like uh, purchasing of the inflatables and other things for the student um, events, um, our grants and, um, and fundraiser uh, cost. Um, what, what we normally find is that even though we budget, uh, I believe we budget about eight thousand dollars for grants. We don't tend to use up all of all of that money. So we did budget um, very close to breaking even here, um, and we do have a good amount in reserve. So we wanted to uh, lower that reserve uh, amount because we have too much, uh, a little bit too much of a carryover. Um, so this is uh, you can see the uh, total income, total expenses and a total amount that uh, we're expecting to raise uh, over the course of the year. And we'll be working with the school on what we will purchase with our um, money that we raise for, for fundraising. Um, we did plan several years ago to purchase um, interlocking tile floor for the gym, since the gym has to be covered during dances. Um, usually there's a big tarp that gets covered, um, but we, we haven't had too many dances in past in the last couple of years. So we're we're going to talk to the school and see, you know, where the priorities are, um, and we'll be sharing that um, information in one of our uh, one of our meetings coming up. So um, right now, I'll take any questions about the budget, and then we're going to go ahead and um, and have a vote. And the vote will be a little bit different because we're virtual, so we have to do it a little bit of a different way. So I'll open it up. Any any questions? Okay. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and, and move forward with our vote. So I just want to let you know that you do have to be a PTSA member to vote. Um, Catherine will, will verify membership so uh, so we can count the votes. Um, and we just need a quorum. And of course, we have more than a quorum here. A uh, quorum for PTSA, according to our bylaws, is eight, eight members. So, um, so what, what I need you to do is um, I'm going to call the vote. And then um, if if it's a, you know, whatever your vote is, if it's a yes, then we're going to have you say yes and name. And if it's no, then you'll say no in your name. So um, do we have do we have a motion to pass the September or the, the fiscal year budget for 24-25? We'll give a motion. Thank you, Jen. And do we have a second? Yes. Thank you. Um, all, all in favor of passing our fiscal year 24-25 budget, write yes in the chat and then your name. And if anyone is opposed, say no and your name. And it looks like we have a lot of yeses here. So we have more than a quorum here. And I don't see any no's. So um, the budget passes. So thank you, everyone. Um, so this will be our budget for the, for the school year. Um, and I do uh, want to remind you of our next PTSA meeting in October is Tuesday, October 15th at 7 o'clock. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Nelson and, and team. So I'm going to take these slides down and we're going to switch the slide deck. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate it.
I'd like to say good evening to everyone that is joining us for tonight's PTSA meeting. I'm really happy that you are here. My name is Mr. Nelson, and I am the principal of Wooten High School. I'm very excited to share with you that I am start starting my third year in this role. I'm going to share a little bit about myself in just a moment, but I wanted to acknowledge that this evening the Wooten team has prepared a presentation for you all. We're hopefully going to share some information that paints the picture of some of our initiatives, some of our foci that we will have as a part of our work. And we have also put together a team that represents a number of departments across our school. I would like to acknowledge everyone here that is on this evening PTSA meeting for your additional time that you're giving to the PTSA that supports us in so many ways. So members of the administrative team, Ms. Raddy and Mr. O'Shell, Ms. Robinson representing counseling services, Ms. Branham, our social worker, our bridge to wellness team, and Nan who's representing our uh, career advising program. Thank you so much for your time. They're really going to impart important information to our parent and caregiver community. And the reason we want that information to flow out is I would like to reaffirm just how integral our parents and caregivers are and to connecting students and what we offer to them to the support that you provide at home. So one of the best things that we can do as a school team is keep you well informed about this information because you are such a support for us. So thank you for our school team as well as our parents for being here tonight. And I hope that everything we share tonight is really informative and helps, keeps you, helps keep you really uh, connected to our school. Uh, so a little bit about myself. My name is Doug Nelson. I'm returning to my role as principal this year. Uh, prior to coming to the amazing place that Wooten High School is, I worked in a number of places around MCPS, a number of schools and offices. So I started initially as an English teacher back in 2001 in MCPS. I was an English and theater teacher and I absolutely loved it. I remember deciding, I remember exactly what classroom and chair I was sitting in in second grade when I decided that I was going to be a teacher. And I never really looked back once I made that decision and it has just been an amazing journey in education. So after being a teacher, I was a staff developer. I made my move into administration soon after that. And I've been an administrator at Clemente Middle School in Germantown, Silver Spring International Middle School in Silver Spring before moving to high school. And most recently before coming principal, I was an assistant principal at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. And all of those buildings just taught me a great deal about not only what it means to teach kids, but really build positive relationships with them it all was really a foundation to helping me become a principal here at the school. And it has been a wonderful journey since coming to our school at Wooten. So next slide, please, Brian. I'd like to share a little bit about our administrative team. I'm very excited to work with this talented group of school leaders. And we have some new members joining our team and we have some returning members who will be back again to serve Wooten High School. So um, I'll start with Ms. Laby. Uh, Ms. Laby is, I believe, starting her 20th year at Wooten High School, and this will be her third year as an assistant principal, so she is returning to the team, as well as Ms. Gardner. This is her second year, and Ms. Gardner is in the role of assistant principal this year. We're really happy to have her back with our school. We have two new administrators who are both joining us tonight, and they will be presenting some slides throughout the evening so that you can meet them virtually, and I hope we'll meet them in person very, very soon. So Ms. Raddy is joining us as our assistant school administrator and she is coming from Anne Arundel County. And uh, this is her first year at Wooten. Mr. O'Shell is starting his journey in high school prior to coming to Wooten. He was an assistant principal at Silver Creek Middle School, which feeds Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. And this is also his sixth year as an assistant principal. So he's some, bringing some experience with him in the role of AP. And of course, our school business administrator, Ms. De La Rosa, she is returning to our team once again in this role. And if you are joining us for the first time, this is your first high school PTSA meeting, I would like to speak to the role of the school business administrator as this is a role that only exists in high school. So Ms. De La Rosa oversees really all of the operations of a, a number of our offices that kind of fulfill different roles in the building. So whether it's the financial office, building services, the cafeteria, um, Ms. De La Rosa is gonna oversee those distinct teams. And when it comes to operations around parking, like this is an office in which you can go to Ms. De La Rosa as you would a, an administrator. 
in order to get questions answered or she is oversees those specific programs out of the business office. So that is a, a position specific to high school. Next slide, please. I would like to share with you our instructional focus for this year at Wooten. And since becoming principal of the school, the instructional focus has been something that has come up recursively at our administrative team meetings, at ILT meetings, the leadership team meetings to talk about what we really want to do when it comes to moving instruction and putting professional development in place to really to steer the school. And we worked diligently throughout the second semester of last school year to really develop this particular instructional focus. And I'm very excited about the potential that it brings to the school this year. And in a moment, I'm gonna kind of draw the through line about where the instructional focus eventually goes. But why is this important to us as a school? Well, the instructional focus is going to paint the picture of what should be happening when it comes to first good instruction that students receive daily. And so this instructional focus the foundation we're calling building our strong foundation because great instruction will happen in the building. The question becomes, how consistent are we with doing strong instructional moves each and every day? So we're going to be giving that a look this year. And the way that we're going to do that is we have built the strong foundation in specific areas of instruction. So right now we're learning about the big picture. This is how you set up your lesson, how you explain the why, you give the goal of the lesson. You start student thinking with an activator and you make criteria for success clear. Then you move into mental engagement. What do you do in order to make students really understand the content or the information you're imparting about a skill that you are developing, whether it's the explanatory devices or how you're really explicit with students about the content that you want them to walk away with? And how do you check for understanding along the way that you know that they're understanding it? Then you anchor the learning. How do you really put structures in place to know you lock that in, whether students are processing, summarizing their learning, and whether they're getting a chance to practice with no fault as they begin to learn the concept. And finally, you assess to be sure both formally and informally students have mastered the concept. And while all of that is happening, you're building relationships and nurturing a positive class climate. These are the things that we really want to see in place when it comes to sound instruction in the classroom. And we are going to be putting a lot of time and effort and focus into this picture of instruction this year. So if I can go to the next slide, Brian, the next two slides are really going to edify why they are particularly important for the school. And this is the through line for planning. Given the strong instructional focus that we want to build, what this guarantees for students is that they have good instruction that all of our students deserve. Every student deserves to have a lesson plan that's very clear, that they understand, and that incrementally moves them through the curriculum on their way to mastery. And that is for all students. That instructional focus then impacts what we do with planning. And we have been nurturing PLCs for the last couple of years. These are planning teams at Wooten. And so what we want planning teams to do is to build that effective a lesson plan that highlights the strong foundation in our instructional focus. But why is it particularly important? Here's the why. We know that some of our students have different results based upon the instruction and the assessment that we have in place. While many students do well, we see variance amongst either certain groups of students. And so we must plan for that. And to plan for our focus students, we must start with the strong foundation if we're ever going to adapt and do things differently with instruction, how we assess, how we adapt instruction, provide accommodations, whatever that move is that helps a learner who might take a different approach with the learning process, you have to start with the strong foundation. So we're working within this kind of paradigm in this through line this year. And next slide, please, Brian. So I wanna connect this to our school improvement goal. And why do we need this instructional focus? Well, over the last two years, and I shared similar information last year with this SIP update, our instructional goals this year focus specifically around literacy and English 9, and the math goal around Algebra 2 performance. And this is specifically focused on our African-American and Hispanic students' performance in both of these areas. And why does literacy make a lot of sense? By starting in ninth grade, we're building a foundation of literacy to where students are eventually assessed according to the state expectation in MCAP in English 10. 
for algebra two, this is where we see that students with their math foundation, algebra two is a challenging course and we see gaps in performance. So we're specifically focusing on this to see if we can move student data. And the truth is around our literacy goal and our math goal, we have seen data improve for these groups. So we want to stick with this three-year goal and the instructional focus is really how we work with our teachers to make sure that the instruction continues our, pro pro excuse me, our positive progress in and around our math and literacy goals. Next slide, please. So now I'm gonna transition into some updates about important things in the school for this year, some things that have shifted, some new initiatives that we're bringing into the building. And the one that I kind of start with annually is around advisory. Advisory is the time built into the schedule for students to either take a brain break, get some reassessment done, meet with a student group, take some time to catch up with friends. Last year, advisory happened right before we went into the lunch period, and it provided a very long period of time in which students had unstructured time. We're making a shift, and I'm going to explain why we're making that shift for this year. So advisory as a structured activity works the same way. Students do not need a pass. They may meet with a teacher. They may go where they want to go inside the building, and it happens for 30 minutes, but it takes place this year in between second and third period, earlier in the day. This is also when our Wellness Wednesday activity takes place. So on Wednesday, everyone stays in place in second, second period, and we roll out a series of important lessons, whether it is a cultural lesson, whether it is something that the county is rolling out and they want to go over student expectations for the year. There's a plethora of topics that we need to actually roll out to students, and that happens on Wednesdays. Now, what I want to explain, particularly if you might have an older student, they are probably talking about this change. And the reason that we needed to make it was that very extensive period of time, a advisory lunch combination allowed a number of students to leave campus without permission. And student safety is going to be a focus this year at our school. And so we looked at this as an ILT, took a look at input from staff, but in particular really considered the observations of our security team. And what we are trying to do is put this in a place where we can still accomplish what we need to do, but we are also trying to be preventative and those things that kind of interrupting the things that stu students shouldn't do, like leave campus without permission to try to go to Chipotle at Falls Grove. So that is the reason for the change. And um, we're already seeing some positive results when it comes to where we have placed advisory in the schedule for this year. Next slide, please. IDs for all. So all MCPS high schools are going to be implementing an ID system this year. It is our goal to be rolling out IDs for all to Wooten students in the coming weeks. There will be communication and details that go out to students about that. But the idea is that students will show an ID upon entrance to the school so they can be verified as being a student assigned to Wooten. And we are working out the details in particular kind of way the logistics are going to work, but some important things that you need to know. Students have been given an ID. They've been given a lanyard and a holder. They're going to need to hold on to those in a safe place so that they are ready to go when we start this initiative. When they come to a main door to enter, so that is like the main door at the front of the school and the lower lot entrance only in the morning, there's going to be someone who is going to check their ID and verify that they are a student coming into the building. And then they're going to what, do what we call show and go. They show that ID, they put it on, they go into the school. After the late bell rings, students are going to be asked to scan on their way in to mark that they were not on school, they were not to school on time, and also a way to check on a scanner that that's a verified ID and it's gonna communicate an email to the teacher. Students then are going to be asked to wear their ID when they are in and around the building, whether that is around their neck, clipped to their backpack, some place visible in which they can vis we can visually see that they are a student wearing our ID. And all of these things really are in place to make sure that staff are checking to know that the individuals who are at school are assigned to be at school. And if you're not, we need to know that and we need to interrupt. So that is another safety structure that we are putting place going into this school year. And again, more details will be forthcoming. Next slide, please. A reminder about our PMD policy, and I want to start with this. There's a lot of talk about technology these days in high schools, that's for sure. So where we are right now is with the policy that we have had in place for the last two years. 
I have to say as a principal, I do believe that in time we might see additional policy for the school system kind of shift or move. Um, but for right now, where are we? Our PMD policy simply says, at the start of class, devices should be off and out of sight. If students have them out, you should expect to have a teacher ask you to put them away. Students should oblige that request and they should keep backpacks in, or excuse me, keep phones in a backpack or in your pocket, and they should not get them out unless there is a specific request from that staff member because it's a part of instruction. Students may have their phones out before class, after class, in the hallways, during lunch, and advisory. Next slide, please. And some reminders about lunch. I think this is very important. Students at Wooten, we specifically have an open campus closed lunch. So what that means is the school is open to you. You may go outside, you may sit out on a bench, you may be in a classroom, you may be in a hallway, the commons, wherever you feel comfortable that students are allowed to sit. You may be in the cafeteria as well. But we are asking that students do not leave campus. And there still are students that make the decision to do that. What I want parents to know is that has to be addressed and we appreciate your support. We will know that our students are safest when they are on campus and they can be monitored based on the monitoring systems that we have. So students should be on campus during lunch and they should only leave if they have permission from their parent. Um, and other than that, the campus is really available for them to meet up with their friends and enjoy some lunch time. One other reminder, students should not use delivery services to have food delivered to Wooten High School. It is a safety concern that individuals we do not know are pulling up and then interacting with students and we don't really know that that is happening. There's also food policy from MCPS Food Services that we want to interrupt that. It is hard to kind of control food in and out of campus when we have a cafeteria that is trying to do their diligent work in providing food to our students. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over at this point in time to Mr. Arshel, one of our assistant principals, who's gonna give some testing updates. Um, but again, thank you everyone for being here for our updates this evening. Mr. Rochelle. Good evening, everybody. Um, in addition to being assistant principal, I'm also the school testing coordinator. Um, so in that role, um, I put together some of the testing that we'll be doing this year. I also work with my colleagues and some other testing um, that's gonna come up this year, that's the other assistant principals. Um, but just a couple um, general ideas around testing is we have about seven state mandated, state mandated assessments each school year. That's in the fall and the spring. Not every student is going to be required to take the test that I'm going to go over. Uh, we strive as best we can to minimize disruption to school schedule and provide ideal testing environment to all students. We'd really try to balance that as best we can. Sometimes it's tough. Um, and we notify those testing dates through the uh, newsletter that goes out uh, from Mr. Nelson. Um, sometimes we do through direct mail if we're communicating um, an alternate testing location for students. Next slide, please. Um, so this is what testing will look like in the fall. So we start with map testing. That's for ninth grade only. Uh, and that is happening in their English and math classes. Uh, that's uh, for math. It's September 19th and 20th. Uh, so just around the bend. That happens just in algebra classes. So I think there's just about three classes that are impacted by that. Uh, we'll do the language arts or map reading test. That's September 30th and October 1st. Again, that's for ninth graders. Uh, testing goes through English classes. So your child should be pretty familiar with these tests. They've taken them throughout middle school and they really just test, they assess their grade level, where they are with regard to reading, reading comprehension. Are they on grade level or below grade level with their reading comprehension? And same thing with mathematics. Are they understanding the concepts that uh, a ninth grader should understand um, for, for mathematics? Uh, PSATs are for 10th grade and it's optional for 11th grade. So all 10th graders will take that. That happens on October 16th. Next slide. Information will be coming out about testing locations and so forth, PSATs. All right, for the winter, um, we have our MCAP test, and those are just really for our 12th graders. We may invite some 11th graders as well, just to get it out of the way. Uh, there are some tests that needed that we're supposed to they have, were supposed to have taken in order to fulfill a graduation requirement. So it's ANISA, that's the science test, government, algebra, and ELA. So those will happen mostly in December. I'm sharing the testing windows right there. We're still solidifying a date. Um, that'll most likely happen for MISA and government uh, about two weeks before that winter break. But again, we'll send out um, 
uh, exact dates once those get solidified. And most likely the testing will occur in the auditorium. In other words, we'll just kind of bring all students together who need to take that test, their 11th to 12th grade. If they are invited to take that test, they really need to show up. They really need to do it. It is a graduation requirement that um, according to our records, they don't have right now. So they need to take that test. Next slide. I think I'm handing it over to my friend, Ms. Liz Robinson, to talk about counseling. Thank you, Ms. Rochelle. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Elizabeth Robinson. I am the resource counselor of our very wonderful um, counseling department at Wooten High School. Um, this is my first year as a resource counselor, but it is my 15th at Wooten. Um, and one fun fact is that I uh, was also a Wooten Patriot. Um, I am not going to give away when I graduated, but yes, there are some staff members still there that I had. So it's been, been a fun ride the last 15 years. Um, so we have a, uh, Wooten counseling website. So when you go to the, uh, Wooten homepage under departments or on the left-hand side, alphabetically slide down to counseling services, you are able to get to our own website where we house a lot of information um, for families. The lessons that we do with our students um, will be in there by grade level. We have a lot of information for um, our resources of study strategies and mental health strategies and a whole bunch of other things in there. And on the main page is our student counselor assignment. So we are broken up by alphabet throughout all grade levels. As you can see above um, the counselors, the administrators are broken up by alphabet chunks. So um, for example, Mrs. Raddy has all students last names starting with A through F in ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. Um, but for us, for the equity purposes for our counselors, we have it broken up just a little bit differently. So if you're unsure of who your child's counselor is, you may head to the counseling website to see that breakdown um, and also provide our um, list of other wonderful service um, staff that we have, our registrar, our counseling secretary, um, dual enrollment coordinator, CCIC, our PPW social worker, Ms. Branham, who will speak with you shortly, and as well as our career advising coach. Okay, Brian, next slide. Thank you. Um, so students can see us. Um, really, we prefer before, after school, or during advisory and lunch, so they are not missing class time. Um, we do have a system in the counseling office where they have to sign in um, before they come back to our offices. Um, and also, they need to have a pass from their teacher, especially if it is during class time, because we need to make sure that teacher is aware that they said they were coming down to see us, um, because we do not want to disrupt and interrupt the um, learning day as well for them. Obviously, if they are in a crisis or really feeling overwhelmed and they need to come down to us, it's like 911 emergency. By all means, they are welcome to come through that door um, and we are not gatekeeping that. But we will oftentimes have to send kids back to class because we know they're just like down missing math or English. Um, but we are available. If not, they are welcome to leave us a little note. We all have boxes outside of our doors. They can just slip a little note in there. They stop by or they're welcome to email us and let that let us know what they want to come by for, schedule a time to meet with us. Some of our counselors might have um, Calendly links or ways to schedule meetings. So um, we also meet with our students. As I said, we have our lesson plans that will be posted as we meet with them on our counseling website. We just wrapped up meeting with our seniors to talk about their final steps in the college application transcript request process. And that webinar link and slideshow presentation is on our website. And we're going to be meeting with our ninth graders through our um, annual meet and greet that we do with them starting the week of September 30th. And then throughout the year, we have other lessons, um, which will be on the next slide that I'll go through. Um, we also have on this presentation um, graduation requirement link that can be found on the MCPS website. 
now that they've streamlined a lot of things, there's really not much change um, between the grade levels. Um, everyone pretty much has the same requirements now in the county from ninth to 12th grade. Uh, we also meet with students for articulation every January, February um, to go over their course registrations for the next year. And we do sit and make sure that they are hitting all of their graduation requirements to graduate on time. Uh, Thursday the 19th, uh, this week, we will be having our Club Activity Expo. We are very big on wanting your children, our students, to be apart from the start. So if they are returning to Wooten and want to try a new club, we encourage them to sign up for that. Um, if they are ninth graders or new to Wooten um, at all, we want them to join and get involved and get acclimated um, as quickly as possible. So this will actually be outside this year, Penn. Hopefully the weather is good enough to have it outside. Um, and they can sign up for as many clubs as they want to. Um, and then heads up mainly for um, the senior Parents is on Friday, the half day. We have a planning for the future Friday where we will have a few things offered to the seniors like essay writing critique. Um, we will have the Montgomery College um, rep come to give everything MC 101 info as well as um, a kind of a general info session on Common App and answering any questions to kids um, that they may have on the Common App needs. Okay, Brian, next one. So as I said, we do have a lesson plan and timeline um, with our grade levels. So we have in October, really starting the 30th of September, but October is usually when we do our ninth grade meet and greet. All students will get the countywide um, SOS signs of suicide lesson. We've done it um, sometimes in the spring. This year we are doing it in November. Um, and we will be presenting to the grade levels, um, working that out with the department um, on how we're in the school on how we're going to deliver that um, lesson and message, but it does come from the county. It is not a Wooten specific uh, lesson. Uh, everyone will get the, except the seniors, the January academic planning. Um, and then 11th grade, they get a little bit more attention than the other grade levels, but um, that's where we're really starting to talk with them and plan their post high school um, thoughts and pathways and plans and things they're thinking about. Okay. And we also have, and this is on the um, Wooten website as well as the counseling website, um, academic resources. Number one, first step, always we encourage the students to talk with their teachers. Uh, we do understand sometimes students might not be able to talk to the adults um, and they might have an easier time talking with kids and getting peer support. So our, our lovely honor societies have support um, throughout the weeks, throughout the days for tutoring, uh, peer tutoring. The National Honor Society has a tutor request form. So if a student just doesn't know where to go or who to ask, um, they can request to have a um, peer tutor uh, for a certain subject. And we also have a wonderful homework club that goes on on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, primarily so that kids can get the um, activity bus after school. Okay. All right, now I'm going to pass it off to our amazing social worker, Ms. Alexis Branham. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Alexis Branham, and I am the school social worker here at Wooten. Um, I started at Wooten in March of 2022, and prior to coming to MCPS, I was a primary therapist at a residential facility. And before that, I was a child investigators and child investigator with Child Protective Services in North Carolina. And I'm here to tell you about some of our social emotional services that we offer here at the school. Next slide, please. So in 2022, MCPS introduced well-being social workers into all the high schools to support students' mental health and social and emotional wellness. Um, prior to 2022, we typically had social workers for students who had IEPs and case managers for those as well. So now they offer social workers for the general population of um, students within the school system. The social worker's mission is to provide equitable access to social, emotional, and mental health supports through collaboration with school and community partners, promoting the academic and personal success of all students and families. Next slide, please. 
So as a school social worker, some of the things that I provide are one-to-one -one counseling. So I'll do assessments, psychoeducation, I'll help students set goals, um, provide additional support, and I can also provide referrals to outside resources. So if your child is in need of a provider outside of school, I can help you navigate that as well. Um, I can also do parent outreach to collaborate on support um, and provide parent education on health and well-being. I do provide group counseling um, for identified students. Currently, I am hosting a group for 11th graders for um, stress management and organizational skills. So I do plan on doing a different group every quarter. And then lastly, I do a lot of collaboration with our student well-being team, ILT, teachers, um, outside providers in the community. And I also work very closely with our Bridge to Wellness program. And I will pass that off to the staff from the program. Yes, um, welcome everybody, hello. Um, so a little bit about what Bridge to Wellness is about. DH DHHS partnered with many mental health agencies to create uh, free mental health services for students and their families inside the schools. So um, we have Shepherd Pratt, which where I and my colleague um, Stephanie is from, is one of the many agencies that DHHS hired um, and um, for the program. And that's what makes most of um, the staff members in um, the Wooten's Bridge to Wellness team. Currently, the staff is consisted of me, the care manager, and our youth development specialist, or YDS for short, which is um, Ms. Stephanie. Next slide, please. <laughs> So um, yes, I am the care manager. My name is Celeste Puente. Um, kind of what the care managers do is we work with the students and their families and we help them apply for um, any government programs that can be for um, food stamps, which is now a SNAP, um, any emergency assistance programs, HOC, health insurance. Um, um, something that I do a lot is um, helping um, the students find therapists or any outside um, community resources when it comes to mental health through the client's um, insurance. Um, we also have um, food pantries that um, can be near the client's home. Um, we also receive donations of clothes, food, hygienic pro products like um, soap, detergent, um, deodorant, things like that. Um, a little bit about me, I am Currently in my graduate program to become a um, clinical social worker. So I am in the office only on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, um, but we are in the school during off um, school hours. And um, this is gonna be my third year with um, Shepherd Pratt as a care manager. And I have four adorable cats that I love so much. So if you know me, I am definitely like always talking about them. <laughs> So um, if you have any questions or anything, um, you're more than likely to um, send me an email and um, we'll show that a little bit later on. But um, I also do speak Spanish so I can speak with um, any Spanish students or their families. Next slide, please. Hi, I am Stephanie Cruz. I am the Youth Development Specialist. I was previously the care manager um, and then I transitioned to the youth development specialist in the middle of like last year. Uh, I've been with Shepherd Pratt for three years. And a little bit about my role um, as a YDS, I help students to succeed in school, work, and life and strengthen their social and emotional skills and healthy habits. This can consist of mentorship, group activities. Um, I do a lot of check-ins with them, one-on-one -on -one or groups. And I do uh, groups as well and recreational activities. So that can be like in the summertime, we do some field trips or uh, this past summer, we did a uh, mindfulness in the park with students. Uh, we try to do uh, in incoming ninth graders, get to know them and get to know our program as well. We do open the lunch room during, um, not the lunch room, I'm sorry, the conference room during lunch. And um, it's available to anyone to come in. We have a couch in there. We try to make it very uh, welcoming. We have games and um, art activities. And we are located on the second floor in the math hallway. So it's definitely um, everyone, usually everyone has a math class. So it's not hard to miss. Next. 
Okay, and so if you have a student um, who you feel like could use any of our services, you can always contact me or our British Wellness staff, or you can also let your student's counselor know because there is a referral process through them. And all of our contact information is on the screen. So if you wanna take a picture to just have it, that is fine as well. Um, I don't have our office numbers on there, but um, as Ms. Stephanie said, our, our offices are in the math hallway. Um, my room is 275 and the British Wellness offices are room 260, is room 266. Thank you. And I'm gonna pass it on to Miss. Oh, here we go. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Nandini. I also go by Nan. Um, I'm really excited to be here to have a couple of, uh, to spare a couple of minutes just to speak about um, what I do here at Wooten High School. So just to give you a bit of heads up, um, I have 15 years of experience in, this, in the realm of clinical psychology, as well as organizational and people development. Originally, I'm from Malaysia. Um, I've worked across various countries um, in the capacity as a within the cycle of HR um, professional. Um, with that said, um, I'm very excited to see how I can impart some of my knowledge as a career coach to some of our students here at Wooten High School. Specifically, I'm here to discuss how MOCOCAT, which stands for Montgomery County Career Advising Program, and how we're implementing the blueprint for Maryland's future, specifically Pillar 3, which focuses on career development and college readiness. MOCOCAT was pretty much birthed as a result of the mandatory blueprint. This program was rolled out in our school successfully last year, although we did start to be, to be fair, we did start sometime in February last year, but we did end with a good bang. So this year, we're aiming to strengthen the core of the blueprint using three critical measures that I will soon, that I will soon share. So the outcome of this career advising um, program is very straightforward from a purpose um, standpoint. My goal is to provide a comprehensive career advising to our high school students at middle school. And for the benefit of some of the parents, this program is also widely available in um, middle school um, as well. So the Blueprint has actually identified a career coach to be placed both in middle as well as, as, well as in high school. So my core tasks are divided into three areas. The first area is exploring strength, interest, and value. One way or one medium that I would utilize is using RIASAC, which is a vocational identity uh, or a model to help our students to identify some of their career preferences. You may have met me during BTSN. You might have seen me in, um, in, in, in a school picnic. Some of you may have also taken the questionnaire, but the questionnaire is basically a path, a, a mean to a path that we're trying to seek further. A lot of times, as an adult, we would have had multiple career shifts or different types of uh, pivoting in our career. And when that happens, one thing that would have remained consistent is the interest in what we're trying to do. So as a career coach, and at every point when instructions are being delivered in classroom setting, we want to ensure that our students have a good understanding of what is an end goal for them. It could be it could be from a career standpoint, it could be from a community standpoint, and also shifting the paradigm from just being college as an end purpose upon graduation. So we want to stretch our students to have the mindset to be more career curious, and that is something that we're trying to cultivate to the Montgomery County Career Advising Program. The second core task that I'm also looking at is to connecting our students to MCPS resources. And one way that I'll go about go about this is by connecting them with our career um, CCICs, CCRD, as well as with our counselors. So we work together collaboratively, even with teachers, by engaging them with a lot of existing content and seeing how career can actually be explored within different realm or different subjects that are being introduced. And of course, identifying suitable majors, minors that they need to pair, uh, they that one needs to pair when they're talking about 
college pathways. Finally, I would also do career exploration where I offer various activities, experiences, and students to explore different careers in various industries. Sometime in November, students will be exposed to something called Meet a Pro, where there will be an analysis to see what is the overall theme that we're seeing between ninth and 10th graders. And based on my understanding last year, we do see a lot of science-related curious mindset, which is known as an investigative theme. And further discussions would be implored to see where the students could benefit from a, a career conversation within a professional in that area. So how I will achieve this is by doing four methods of reaching out. First thing is push-ins. When I say push-ins, I pretty much mean that I'll be conducting deliverables, I'll be conducting instructional lessons for ninth and 10th graders. And this will happen um, paced out in the school calendar between September, October, as well as in February. <clears throat> The second way that I reach out to students is through individualized as well as small group coaching. So on my on this screen, you also have access to my email address. So parents, if you're interested, go ahead, uh, print screen um, this particular page because you can drop me an email if you think your child may potentially require a form of one-on-one -on -one count uh, coaching. And this is something that has already been happening since last year, and we continue having these conversations with our students. Students can self-nominate. Teachers can suggest these students to have a conversation with me, and parents can also um, write in to me. The third way that I would also work with our students is through skills and work-related competency training, which is constantly happening. It also happened in summer, such as resume building, mock interview, professionalism, business etiquette, um, whichever concerns them around the essential skills in a workplace. Last but not least, I also reach out through teacher champion team. We have seven wonderful um, uh, teachers in combination with administrative staff who advocates for the program and they become the voice so that it's a two-way communication between Wooten High School's need as well as from Mo MoCo CAP standpoint. And we also leverage from a student advisory um, team as well, consisting about 15 students across all four grades. So in conclusion, dear parents, what I pretty much need is based on the slide that you're seeing is I want you as, an, as, an, as a cause of action, I would want you to encourage to support your children in any form of career exploration and reach out to me to see how we can continue having that conversation one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting or in a, in a school level setting. Um, to basically end this conversation, I just want us to be mindful, to be cognizant that we want our children, we want our students to be empowered in making informed career decisions, pretty much knowing about themselves. Who am I? What are my options? How am I growing? And where am I hated? Right. So with that, thank you so much. Um, I hope I was able to capture everyone's um, attention in what I'm doing and we will pass forward. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jillian Raddy. I'm the ASA this year at Wooten. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the ways that we, so you heard about how we're reaching out to your students. We've got our, our counseling department and bridge to wellness and our career coach and all of those things. But we also really hope that your students will lean into the next couple of years in their high school experience. So I wanted to talk about some of the clubs and organizations that we have um, at Wooten, we have over 150 different clubs. Um, so what you see on the screen is just a really small snapshot of some of the opportunities. And we've got everything from academic clubs, like our academic decathlon and science Olympiad, to culture and identity clubs, like our Asian American club, our Christian fellowship, our Muslim student association, um, uh, and... Um, I know our Black Student Union is a very active part of the school as well. Um, service and activism clubs, a lot of students really enjoy these for the building of their student service learning hours and their resume and their giving back to the community. And then we've got the ones that are just for fun, which I think are really great for high school students to take the time, those advisory times and those lunch times to just chill out and hang out with friends and do something fun like coding or pretty pretty princess tea party. Sounds fun. Might find that one next week. Um, but we have these clubs all listed out there on 
at this point on the walls in the building, we have made posters so that as we move through the school year, students will be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm a little bit bored today on Tuesday advisory. What can I go do? Um, and just look at what's open and available for them during that time if they're all caught up on their homework and stuff. Next slide. Thank you. So there are a number of co-curricular as well as extracurricular opportunities. Co-curricular meaning that there is a class that goes with them. So our theater program, um, we have a great theater program. We're doing two shows this fall. Uh, so there are classes with that as well as the outside of school, outside of academic time commitment, as well as our music programs, our acapella group, our show choir, our marching band, our jazz band, our orchestra. We have a really strong performing arts program. Um, many of our art clubs will also have classes that go with them. Um, so all of that. And then our extracurriculars are things that don't necessarily have a curricular link but our opportunities for our students. Most of our clubs meet during advisory or lunch. You heard Mr. Nelson talk a little bit about how that looks different this year. So some of the clubs have chosen to meet on advisory on Monday and lunch on Wednesday or something like that, or they're meeting two advisories of the week instead of just one to really get that good chunk of time. But all of those club meeting times can be found on the posters in the building. Like I said, club lists will be posted throughout the building. We actually got those up today. So if your students are looking for something to do or somewhere to go, that is available. But we also will have the um, extracurricular fair, the activities fair that is happening on Thursday. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, uh, our uh, vocal music teacher, is in charge of extracurriculars and things like that. And he does an incredible job organizing all of that and running all of that. So he is also a great go-to if your student is looking for somewhere to get involved. Um, one of the things that we really want to encourage our students to do is be involved, but find a balance. We want them to find one or two, maybe three things that they're really truly passionate about and really invest their time and energy into those things. Um, we know that there's a lot of benefits to having a lot of things on that college application and that job resume and all of those things. But taking on a leadership role in a club or starting your own club with an, with an appropriate advisor and things like that is also a really great way to get that same recognition without spreading yourself too thin. So as your students are looking for ways to get involved, really have them think about what's going to be fun for me, what's going to stimulate me, and then all of that stuff. And if your student needs help finding a place, they can always come to a trusted teacher or their administrator or their counselor, and we can help them figure out what's going to be a good fit for them as well. <clears throat> awesome. And Jillian, this one comes back to me, right? Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. And Brian, this was my holder slide. So this is last year's dates. So we can just skip right by this one. Thank you very much. Um, so that concludes our presentation. Thank you all very much for being here with us in the PTSA. Uh, I hope that this presentation to you was informative and got and painted a picture of kind of some of the things that not only we have planned at the start of the school year, but many of the programs that we offer to our students. So thank you to the Wooten team for presenting. And Brian, I will turn it back over to you. All right. And thank you everyone for joining this evening. Our next meeting will be October 15th at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.